basically two kinds of circulation of CSF in the brain. You have a circulation which aims to regulate the intracranial pressure uh, because the first compartment, which is decreased when you have intracranial pressure, is uh, the liquid compartment. And you have another circulation that I detailed previously, which is the circulation of the CSF uh, in the glymphatic system. So this circulation is more a metabolic circulation and aim at uh, clearing uh, the metabolites of the brain and to allow the neuroimmune surveillance of the brain. So this circulation, the circulation of CSF can be divided in these two uh, aims. So you have the production of CSF in the choroid plexuses of the brain. And then you have a part of CSF which goes in the subarachnoid space and another one who, who goes, which goes uh, to through transepidermal resorption directly to the perivascular space. Here you have a direct CSF re resorption, uh, which is uh, like the one we, we all learned in the medical school, uh, which correspond to the drainage of CSF from the subarachnoid space to uh, the venous blood through the arachnoid granulation, and also to, to dural lymphatic and cranial nerve sheets. And you have the circulation of the CSF in, in the lymphatic system, which end up, uh, in my opinion, this is not proven, again, it's just a theory, uh, in the vascular arachnoid granulation to the vein and in the dural lymphatics uh, to the lymphatic circulation. These two circulations, uh, uh, ve it's very important to uh, differentiate them because the first one is just to uh, balance the intracranial pressure and the other one uh, is to, uh, like I said, clean the brain from the metabolites and, and allow the neuroimmune surveillance of the brain. 